hi, I'm Yuan Chi. Remember last time, when I traveled to Yingsu or Yin Ruins in the metaverse and explored the oracle bone inscriptions there? Today, I will talk to an archaeologist in real world, and let's see what stories he can share with us. Hello, Mr. Hud. Hello, Yuan Chi. So nice to meet you. Months ago, I visited the Yingsu Museum in the metaverse. There, I lead my audiences to an exploration of the mysterious oracle bone inscription artifact. Right. I watched your adventure in the metaverse of our Yinshu Museum. You showed our oracle bone inscriptions in such vivid detail. I was very impressed by the interaction between a human and a pig. That was quite lively and surprisingly easy to understand. Thanks, Mr. Ha. Archaeology is quite a mysterious topic for most people. I am also curious, what do you, an archaeologist, think of this subject? One key point about archaeology is people's curiosity for new things and their desire to explore them. So I often say that we archaeologists have two identities. One is a detective. When you, Yuan Shi, time travel 3,000 years to Yinshu, you are actually looking at everything from a detective's eyes. Archaeologists also serve the important role of translator. Whatever we unearth cannot talk by themselves. It's important for us archaeologists to properly explain and convey the information to people today, to you, Yuan Qi. We say that traditional Chinese culture is excellent, yet many people may not know it without such a translating process. Like you, Yuan Qi, you too are promoting our culture. So in my eyes, you are also one of us. With the rapid development of today's science and technology, how do we serve the archaeology translator job well? Digital technologies are developing fast and we are using them a lot in our museums. This year, as deputy to the National People's Congress, I have prepared a motion to digitize oracle bone inscriptions and get them back to Yin Shu. When we unearth oracle bones, many of them are broken into pieces, but we researchers want to gather them all on one platform. Now we can use digital technology to piece the bones together, which is crucial for researchers. There's another benefit. We could build a big database, a public platform. Then we can invite Yuan Shi to our platform and interact with the audience. This would be beneficial for both the public and researchers. We are telling these archaeology stories to today's audiences. So why do you think they would want to know about Yingsu and oracle bone inscriptions? That's a very good question. Here in Yinchu, we have excellent traditional culture. The core of it are the Chinese characters as represented by oracle bone inscriptions, which then evolved to Chinese bronze inscriptions, and then small and large seal script, regular script, clerical script, and cursive script. For regular Chinese who want to learn about oracle bone inscriptions, one month would be enough for them to recognize hundreds of them. When we write the Chinese character Shan, we are writing an oracle bone inscription, same thing happens when we write the character Ri. We are using the inscription every day. We want to tell a story so that people can still feel that oracle bone inscriptions are around us. So why are they so important? Because oracle bone inscription is an ideogram. It is different from Western phonetic characters. It thus goes beyond dialects. We may speak different dialects, but when we see such ideographic characters, we can communicate with each other. No matter how dynasties change, Chinese characters represented by oracle bone inscriptions remain the carrier of Chinese culture, even today. In this way, Chinese culture is guaranteed to be passed on.